Data analytics are a way to help us take advantage of technologies in ways we haven't been able to in the past. But oftentimes we get the question, what exactly is or are data analytics and how does it apply to our digital transformation? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach their third stage of digital transformation success. And one of the common areas that we look at and evaluate when helping our clients through their digital transformation is data analytics. And data analytics is something that's becoming more and more important as organizations grow and accumulate data over decades of using enterprise technologies. And when you combine that with the fact that data tool sets and data itself is proliferating at a breakneck speed, you can see how data analytics is becoming increasingly important. In other words, organizations have more data than ever, they're accumulating data at a more rapid pace than ever, and data analytics is a way to really make use of that commodity and that asset that organizations are developing. So what I want to do today is whiteboard an example of a sample organization and talk through data analytics in the context of that organization. Now, for more information about data analytics and other aspects of digital transformation, I highly encourage you to download our digital transformation report. It's a guide to best practices for implementations, their software reviews and rankings, emerging trends and technologies that you should be aware of, a whole host of best practices that really apply to any sort of digital transformation. So I encourage you to download that via the link below. Now, in order to fully unpack and understand what data analytics are and how they apply to an organization, it first helps to paint a picture of what a typical organization looks like, just a real simple flow of, of information. So to start, most organizations will typically have their customer. This is the uh, typically the first piece of the equation. This is the customer or stakeholder that they're trying to address or provide a product or service to. And let's just assume that this is a manufacturing organization. And even if you're not a manufacturing organization, it'll still help you to understand what data analytics are and how it applies to organizations. But to start, let's assume that you have customer orders or customer inquiries that come into your sales group. So sales is the first major function that would touch the customer or potential customer. Sales rep takes an order, then whatever product is being sold now needs to be manufactured. So we've got the manufacturing process here. And then once it's manufactured, we're gonna distribute that product or those products. Oops. It's just one distribution. And then distribution ultimately gets the product to the end customer. So it's sort of a circular loop here. So you've got the distribution that comes back to the customer, customer places future orders, and on and on we go. Now within the manufacturing piece of it, you actually have a couple of little sub processes here that are worth noting. You've got raw materials that typically come into the manufacturing process. And so that entails buying raw materials from your suppliers. And then you've got finished products here. So your finished goods or components or whatever it is you're, you're producing for your customers are here. So I'm gonna take this and unpack this and talk about how data analytics can apply to this sort of a situation or this sort of environment. And again, even if you're not a manufacturing and distribution organization, the idea here is that data analytics can apply to any organization. Now, when we talk about data analytics, it first helps to understand sort of the base foundation of what goes into data analytics. And really the root and the source of all data analytics is gonna be big data or the data itself. And what big data is, is essentially mass amounts of data that are being accumulated throughout an organization, throughout its supply chain, and also with its customers. So customers are producing data in terms of inquiries that they might have with the sales team. They might be hitting a website, they might be filling out forms or expressing some sort of interest, sending emails, whatever the case may be. A lot of data is coming from your customers. Obviously throughout the sales, manufacturing and distribution process, this whole extended process here is going to create quite a bit of data as well. And then one other thing that's worth noting too that I haven't mentioned is in addition to these processes here, sort of down here running in parallel, 
you've got your finance and accounting processes as well. And that's important because that's another source of data too. So finance and accounting is, is typically accumulating data from the supply chain and, and sort of providing that rear view mirror approach or understanding of what has happened within the organization over a period of time. So data is being accumulated throughout the process from customer all the way through manufacturing, closing the books and accounting for all the transactions that have happened. And then ultimately the information or the, the products going back to the customer will ultimately produce data as well. For example, when the customer receives or how the customer receives the product is gonna create a certain subset of data. So big data is really important. There's data being captured all over the place, transactional data. You think about product data, you know, what products are you manufacturing? Every product that you produce as an organization, every raw material, every finished product, every customer that becomes a customer is producing data. So big data is really the source and the impetus for how we get data analytics to work. So now I wanna talk through data analytics sequentially in terms of the more basic aspects of data analytics and then work our way up to the more advanced and sophisticated aspects of data analytics. The first and most fundamental, most basic component of data analytics is just your financial reporting. So again, you've got your finance and accounting group here that's capturing data to close out periods and, and understand what happened in terms of profitability, uh, the cost structure, assignment of cost to the appropriate accounts and budgeting and all that sort of stuff. So there's a lot of reporting that comes out of finance and accounting. You also have production reports that show how many or what percentage of orders were fulfilled on time, for example. What was the average lead time for a customer from the time they placed an order here until they actually received the product? What was that average cycle time, for example? These are just a few examples of reports that provide insights as to what has already happened within the organization. And that's really the key limitation of traditional reporting is that we're looking backwards. We're looking at what already happened. And the beauty of data analytics is now we start to use that same data to look forward to the future. And it's a different technology, it's a different approach, and it's a different mindset not to dismiss or undermine the importance of financial reporting and basic reports, but there's other things that can be done from a data analytics perspective. And that's what I'll talk about here throughout the rest of this video. So taking reporting one step further is gonna be predictive analytics. So predictive analytics is just what it sounds like. It's taking data from the past and trying to predict what will happen in the future based on historic trends. For example, if this manufacturing organization manufactures swimming pools and related pool supply products, it's safe to assume that the hotter it is within certain parts of the world, the more pools that are gonna be sold and the more pool products that are gonna be sold. So predictive analytics would look back historically to look at trends and to look at what the correlations are between weather patterns and sales within certain parts of the world, for example. So that's what predictive analytics will do is it will take historic data, but then model them for the future based on different assumptions. And it's a great way to really not just look backwards, look in the rear view mirrors we talked about with reporting, but now we can start to get a better handle on what the future holds for us. And what that does is it allows for us to plan for the future. So we can build some assumptions and estimate, for example, how much we need to manufacture. Because if we know it's gonna be a really hot summer in London this summer, then we know that in London or in Europe, we're gonna to have to produce more pools. And so predictive analytics will allow us to figure out how much do we need to manufacture based on the assumptions that it's gonna be warmer in London this summer. And we need to manufacture well in advance, so we need to understand that before it actually gets hotter in London, if possible. That may not be the best example simply because we can't predict weather patterns necessarily three to six months out or however long we need to for this example, but it gives you a sense of how we can use predictive analytics to plan for the future. It also allows us to understand what customer demand might be, which then ultimately feeds into manufacturing, but it also allows us to figure out what our staffing might be and how we might scale our organization based on projected growth, that sort of thing. So predictive analytics is a very powerful tool that has really become in vogue over the last 10 or 20 years in the digital transformation space, but yet organizations still haven't even figured out how to do basic reporting, so they certainly haven't figured out how to do predictive analytics as well as they could. So this is an area that a lot of organizations could benefit from is by building better predictive 
analytics within their organization and within their digital transformation. So taking predictive analytics one step further is artificial intelligence. And artificial intelligence is becoming the holy grail of data analytics. This is really accumulating and making the most possible use of the data you have, not only internally within your organization, but also looking externally outside your organization, looking at your customers, looking at your suppliers. So if, you have a, if you're a manufacturing organization and you have raw material suppliers, if you can be capturing data from those suppliers to learn and to look for patterns and to do what humans could do if we had more time and the skills to do more of it, which is to estimate and plan what we think will happen based on all these massive amounts of data points that we have throughout our supply chain. Another thing AI allows us to do, and this takes big data one step further, is yes, we have data within the organization. Yes, we have data coming from customers. We have data coming from suppliers. But what about external third-party data points? Could we be using third-party data to augment the data we have collected here within our organization to use AI to really take it to the next level in terms of planning and estimating what we think will happen in the future. Back to my example about the hot summer in London and what that might do to a pool manufacturer. So if we can get data related to weather trends and weather patterns based on historic trends and where scientists see the climate in London headed in the next six to 12 months, we could use that data source and use artificial intelligence to make meaning of that to combine that data source with all the data we have and to come up with a model of what it's estimated to look like in terms of demand for swimming pools in London this summer. So that's just, again, a very simple example of how data, both internally and third party, could be used to fuel artificial intelligence to help plan and scale for future growth in ways that we haven't been able to in the past. A lot of times without artificial intelligence, without predictive analytics in the past, we'd have to sort of guess and go off instinct and tribal knowledge to figure out what we think is gonna happen in the future. And there's always gonna be a certain amount of that that is required to run a business. But now with powerful tools like artificial intelligence, we can take all these masses of data that exist within our organization and throughout the world externally with third parties to really use artificial intelligence to its full capability. So this is all exciting stuff, predictive analytics and artificial intelligence, all the stuff we've been talking about here today. But there's one risk or one thing to think about as it relates to data, and that is cybersecurity and data privacy. So with masses of data and with more data sources and more access to data comes increased cybersecurity risk and data privacy issues. So let's start with data privacy issues. When we're capturing information about or from our customers, there are laws and regulations now that protect customer data and limit our ability to use that data freely. So for example, in Europe, there's a law called GDRP, which limits the way you can use customer data. And it's really meant to protect consumers and customers from having their data and their privacy taken from them. So that's something to be aware of. And cybersecurity too, as we look at an extended supply chain that is much more complex than I've illustrated right here, there's a lot of sub steps and processes and systems that are touched along the way. That proliferation of systems and data increases the exposure of risk of cybersecurity threats, both internally from the organization in terms of employees that might misappropriate information unintentionally or intentionally, as well as externally with hackers and nefarious actors that are trying to steal data or do something nefarious with, with that data. So as we think about data analytics, one thing we also have to be aware of is the dark side, which is the data privacy and cybersecurity side of things. So I hope this has given you a basic introduction to what data analytics are, how it might apply to your digital transformation. And for more information that I think will help you understand data analytics, as well as other aspects of technology and digital transformation in general, I encourage you to start by downloading our digital transformation report, which outlines best practices and software reviews, software rankings, tips and lessons learned from digital transformations throughout the world and other things that will help you through your digital transformation. I encourage you to download that via the links below. I've also included a whole host of other resources too to help you with your digital transformation. So be sure to check out those links in the description field below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. Data analytics, Data analytics, that just that sounded all appropriate. <laughs>
Data analytics are one of the most important. Now, and you add to that the fact that more 